Hello dear friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel Mukesh English. This is Mukesh Soni. In this video, I have brought your famous novella titled Dweepa Island by Nard D'Souza, Leonard D'Souza, with reference to the translated version by Sushila Punita. So let's know about the famous writer Nard D'Souza. Nard D'Souza was born in Shimoga district, Karnataka on 6 June 1937. He worked in the Public Works Department, Government of Karnataka for 35 years. His interests are reading, writing, traveling and participating in activities concerning the environment. He began writing at the age of 21 and has published 45 novels and most famous novel is here Manjana Karno, Dvipa and Baman. Many of his short stories have been translated into other Indian languages and English. He is a recipient of a number of awards, including the honorary doctorate from Coimbatore University and the Sahitya Academy Bal Puraskar in 2011. Now, having worked in the Sharavati River Valley project, Nar D'Souza witnessed the entire activity of dam building dam building from beginning to the end and he had observed the apathy of bureaucracy he had first an experience of studying the project's effects on the lives of the poor and marginalized village folk and continues to be actively involved in various social movements particularly related to environmental issues in and around sagar town where he lives Nar D'Souza is known in Kannada literary circles as a submersion writer. Why? With a reference to many stories he has written about people and the families affected by the big dams. That's the reason that he is referred as a submersion writer. Dvipa, Islands, published in 1978. Mulugade, Submersion, 1984, which won a prize in the Ugadi issue of the weekly Sudha, 1983 and Odu means to say the dam or barricade 1990 are the most prominent work by Nardu Suza. Dvipa first came out in a serialized format in 1970 in Prakasha, a weekly from Manipal. It was compiled and published in the, no in the form of a novella in 1978. It has been loosely adapted by a film by Girish Kasarwali which won the President's Gold Medal Award in 2006. Now let's know about the translator, the person who translated Dvipa into English by Sushila Punita. Sushila Punita was born in Bangalore, Karnataka. She is a former professor of English, Mount Carmel College and Center for Postgraduate Studies, uh, Shashadipram College, Bangalore. She has written stories for rural children for a UNICEF project called Children for Change and has, has translated Vaidahi's uh, Vasudeva's family as well as the work of R. Anand Muthi, which was shortlisted for both the Hindu Literary Prize and DSC Prize for South Asian Literature in 2011. Now, this is a brief introduction about the author as well as the translator. Now, the setting of the novella, a brief input about the novella before we go on the storyline. The novella Dvipa follows the lives of Ganapaya, his wife Nagweni, and his father Dugaja, and the struggles of the village of Hosamanahalli. Because it faces the complete submersion due to the Sharavati hydroelectric project, due to the dam which is going to be built on Sharavati River. So the whole family, the whole village faces the, the whole trouble because of this project. The novella is set in the Malnad region of Karnataka. The village is bordered. The village is bordered by the river Sharavati. And there's a Parvat, there's a mountain, a hillock, Sita Parvata. A Sita Parvata is a hillock which is covered with lush vegetation, flora and fauna, surrounded. But at the top, it's a bald, uh, sorry, it's a bald, it's a very bald top. So very plain at the top. The Stalapura, the Stalapura of Sita Parvata is that, uh, so there's a mythological reference here, that Rama, Sita and Lakshmana, they had crossed the Sharavati river and they rested in a cave 
on the top of this hill on the top of this sita parvatha so this is a quite brief um, introduction to this story to this novella here now to begin with hosaman halli the village which consists of five families remember there are five families three areka plantation and the three rice fields so there are three areka areka plantation and there are three rice fields now out of these five families three families are the landlords right jamindar the landlords and the other two families are the bonded laborers they are not as rich as those landlords the three families are the landlords and the two families are the bonded laborers now the children of those bonded laborers they have to spend the entire life entire lives for their masters because they would have taken the loans and they are unable to repay so they have to continue they have to spend the whole life as the bonded laborers for their masters so there is no way for those bonded laborers uh, to have their own freedom or to buy or to earn their own freedom so it depends on their masters to free them as we see in this story we find we find here nagavani's father who releases who decides to give krishnaya he is one of his bonded laborers to give some land and to live, to make him to live uh, independently so very rare cases like this so it all depends on the masters it all depends on the landlords to free the bonded laborers <clears throat> so now there are five families we have come to know here and of these out of these five families there are three landlords uh, haramba hegde and parmeshwara uh, and uh, sorry haramba hegde and uh, parmeshwarappa they both landlords are very wealthy and they have their own land obviously right they have their own land and uh, obviously they have their own bonded lab labors also and their labors are baira and halam they are the labors of uh, these two in these two important uh, landlords now they work for the land the another the another third landlord we have here ganapaya ganapaya who is the protagonist of the novel and but ganapaya is neither rich ganapaya is neither rich and nor poor but he does not have any bonded labors what does he do he hires the labors and he just pays them what are the work he gets done he pays to them so he does not have his own bonded labors despite not being wealthy even though ganapaya has the same esteem how the other two landlords have in the community so he is also quite respectable person how haramba hegde and parmeshwarappa they are respected persons in the society in the community similarly ganapaya is also quite respectable person but he does not have any bonded labors now now everything changes here the whole there is a great change a great uh, tide and fall appears in the story here with the sharavati hydro electric project with the construction of a dam on this river sharavati river so as we know very well that any project any dam project if any dam project comes up in any of the uh, village what so what's going to happen it's going to it's going to take away whole land including villages agricultural land Uh, the common grazing land and the village commons even the forest will also be submerged and not only with this the other things also submerged like these villages lifestyles these villages values these villages cultures these villages memories so everything is going to be submerged because of this sharavati hydroelectric project because of this dam project this dam as well as dam project i would say the government arranges to as usual what happens what does the government do the government is going to arrange here some compensation to displace those landlords with the land they are going to give the land quite far away some other place so that they can lead their life and but only those and who are getting the land here who are going, who are getting the displaced land over there only those people who are able to bribe the officers what about the others those unable to bribe the officers they cannot be displaced they cannot get the land some other place the bonded laborers as we know very well the bonded laborers they have no land so obviously they are not covered by this compensation policy or by this compensation schemes by the government so what is the future their future is uncertain 
especially since they are expected to move with the owners so obviously they have to go with the owners their owner their malik their masters so here the two landlords haramba hegde parmeshwar appa they have got on the land some other place up to paying some bribe now what about this ganapaya we know that ganapaya is not so wealthy though he is also landlord but he is not so wealthy enough to bribe the submersion officer so though he applies what happens his application is lost his application is lost so finally he decides to stay back with his wife and with his father duggaja and they are all ready to face the consequences of the change in the landscape uh, in the village what are the changes will happen they are going to face those changes together and they thank they thank to the urban centric notions of modernization so dear readers the uh, sorry dear friends here we have seen here this novella here is trying to draw the readers attention where to the government's apathy and corruption the officers are using different ways to confuse the simple village folk they're trying to cheat them uh, they're asking for the bribe to move the file from uh, one officer one compensation officer to the another officer so so much is that here and haramba hegde even even haramba hegde tells ganapaya to pay a few rupees as a bribe to retrieve his file which the officers are telling it's lost so this starts a very very vicious cycle here ganapaya has no money for a bribe and his file is lost so finally he decides he decides to stay back he decides that he won't leave his home unless he certain of the compensation amount without paying any bribe the compensation amount cannot be ascertained without the file so vice versa he doesn't have file and he cannot get the compensation so obviously he has no choice he has a choice to stay back so ganapaya and his family remain in the village despite the despite the rising water levels even though the sharavati rivers water level is increasing even though they decide to stay back in the village so now now we have seen here there is uh, we have seen the what it's a monsoon season <clears throat> in the it's a monsoon season and the water level is increasing and the when it's a monsoon season obviously what's going to happen the hillock will be cut off hillock will be cut off due to the uh, huge force of the river's water and here duggaja duggaja who is ganapaya's father and he encourages ganapaya to get some laborers to stay with them for a few months of monsoon because the area is getting cut off by the river so duggaja uh, ganapaya's father he says to ganapaya why don't we have some laborers for few days with us because due to the heavy force of the river's water the the area might be cut off here so what happens here uh, nagmani Na- nagvani nagvani who is uh, ganapaya's wife and she goes in nearby town and she, to find some laborers as well as to stock up some provisions because it's going to rain very heavily before it starts raining very heavily torrential rain she just try to accumulate some ration uh, some provisions for home as well as she could try to find out some laborers so in this course she visits her family her father's family nagvani visits her father's her father's house and where she finds krishnaya krishnaya who is a bonded labor in nagvani's nagvani's father's house and uh, <clears throat> she offers him to live with them for the monsoon and krishnaya though he is very much older than nagvani so both because both of them have grown together so they have very close bonding so finally krishnaya has come with nagvani to stay with nagvani and ganapaya till the monsoon season so here uh, the water level is rising at the same time what's happening the at such same time the we can say here the temperature in ganapaya's house uh, his house is also rising so water level as the water level rise and all the other residents of hosamanalli village they also leave the village only who are left ganapaya his wife nagvani his father duggaja right they are all isolated from the outside world so isolation is the another theme which is portrayed here in this manner 
Now, both Duggaja, who is 26 years old, and Nagvani, who is uh, she is between 39 to 40, and they all remark about that how boring it is, how monotonous life is, uh, people are not here, so life has become so monotonous, so they have such kind of discussion. And they also discuss that how can they manage all the other challenges of, of living in the isolation because nobody is in the village, they are all alone. Okay, so here as Krishnaya joins this Ganapaya's family in Hosaman Halli, the tension rises as the water level rises. As the water level is rising, similarly, the tension in the family is also rising. So anyway, there is a very scarcity of level, uh, sorry, labor in the town. So what happens here in between Duggaja, Ganpaya's father passed away. Now Ganpaya feels very insecurity about the bond, right? He feels very insecurity and he finds that a sort of bond is getting created between uh, his wife, Nagveni and the bonded labor, Krishnaya. So he's getting a lot of insecurity, having seen the growing comfort and the fondness, fondness his father, sorry, his wife, Nagvani is sharing with the bonded labor, Krishnaya. So <clears throat> what happens uh, following a clash, uh, Ganpaya, has, Ganpaya has a clash with Krishnaya and uh, where Ganpaya finds out a lot of insecurity and Krishnaya also dismisses that. He says that no, no, nothing is wrong like this, nothing like this as you are thinking. So what happens here? It's like uh, <clears throat> Nagvani and Ganapaya, uh, uh, this one, Krishnaya, they are like siblings and uh, the two men have grown together, right? So, but here Nagvani remains quiet. Nagvani slips into the world of silence. So, <clears throat> here something great thing is going to happen here. As the cabin fever brews one night, the dam of unsaid passion between Krishnaya and Nagvani is breached. And the two of them are both horrified and satiated by their night of passion. So both of them get indulged in some sort of relationship in one of the nights. And <clears throat> here, as the love triangle between Ganpaya, Nagvani and Krishnaya gets deeper and more complex, now each of the characters in the story gets more isolated and marooned from the others. So here we find a theme of isolation at this level of story. Now, as we know that, as we know that Krishnaya and uh, Nagvani they are in relation, and uh, Ganpaya, G Ganpaya has already smelled it. So what happens? The next day, Krishnaya decides to leave the next morning because he cannot face Ganpaya because he has already broken his trust. Moreover, he cannot also see Nagvani because for plotting with her. So he's aware that this incident should not come to the light. It has already, sorry, he's aware that this incident has already come to light and he's wholly responsible for such incident even though, even though Nagvani has initiated such kind of encounter. So what happens? Krishnaya attempts to swim across the swollen Shirav Shiravati river. So he tries to escape. So he attempts to swim across the Sharavati river. Nagvani also enters the river to stop him. But unfortunately, two of them disappear into the raging water. Due to the heavy uh, level of the water, due to the rising water, both of them get disappeared into the water. Ganpaya has already washed them. He has already overheard the screams in a state of shock from a distance. He has already overheard the screams that they were trying to escape and they were trying to come out of the water. So Ganpaya, finally what happens? He returns to his house. But there, Ganpaya is greeted by the tiger. By the tiger who has been lurking through the narrative, through the narrative, sitting at his doorway. The tiger was waiting at his doorsteps and the moment Ganpaya reaches his house, his doorsteps, what happened? The tiger pounces on him and tiger kills Ganpaya. And the novel and this novella, Dvipa Island, ends here. So dear friends, in this Dvipa, in this novella, we find here some important themes. What are the themes here? 
the themes are we find the growing sense of disillusionment and disenchantment with the rapid modernization and industrialization so we have seen here that how because of the dam because of the uh, shravati river uh, uh, this project how many people they have lost their uh, lands and they have lost their culture and only the one person who was very much who could not pay the bribe who had to stay back so we find the theme of marginalized groups they remain voiceless because he cannot pay the bribe so he had to stay back moreover at the overall level at a larger scale if you go through this novella we find the theme of climate change and environmental degradation precipitated by human behavior so all these things are happening because of our human behavior and obviously at the end of the day we find nature has been marginalized in the real life and finally we i already explained here that how the character how the characters in the story like nagveni uh, ganapaya his father they all feel isolated they all they all feel alone when nobody is in the house except this family so the another theme we find here isolation so thus despite its complexity of treatment of themes dwipa remains a cautionary tale against human kind's mindless exploitation of nature unchecked development and against the transgression of transgression of social norms of relationships and social intercourse so this is how i have tried to analyze this novel thank you so much for watching this video dear friends thank you so much for watching this video you can reach me at mukeshenglish@gmail.com please do subscribe the channel click on the like button for more videos on literature workbook pronunciation grammar communication skills presentation skills interview skills stay in tune with mukesh english thank you once again